Well, hello on this Motivational Monday. I wanted to get on here. Some more pickles. To encourage you. To uplift you. To motivate you. We got to move forward. Continue to do the things we do. Don't let nobody stop you in your tracks. One of the things I wanted to address today, I wanted to talk about a different topic, and that was my weight loss journey, okay? As far as I can go back, I want to say, hmm, maybe 2005, I'm going to start there. I was in a dark place in my life. Things happened in my life. And when I really realized that I was an emotional eater because it made me feel good, I can remember specifically my daughter, I was taking her to school. She went to college. And on the way back home, I would always stop at this, um, it was like a Asian place, but they had other foods like fried chicken and so on and so forth, which I don't eat none of that no more, okay? We all done ate some stuff we ain't got no business, okay? I used to get shrimps. They had these shrimps that had like buttery just a taste to your palate that was so good and almost like, ooh, I got to have this again. I got to have this again type of thing. And I will pull over. Now, mind you, it was some ways to get back to my house, but the way I came, it was like a straight shoot. I mean, like you turn maybe a couple of times, but it's a straight shot. And I will pull over and eat them shrimps. And it just seemed like me eating those shrimps just made me so happy. So as I finished that, I would proceed on my way home. Closer to my home was another place. They pretty much was, I think, the same, but different areas. I would get some more. And I did this quite often. My son, and like I said, I bring my kids into this a lot. They're my children. They're part of my life. I'm not putting their names on it because um, this is about me trying to help you and others. One time he said to me specifically, it's funny now, we, thought, we done laughed about it a million times, but at that point in time it wasn't. He was just really concerned about what I was going through. I was eating, and I started crying. He said, Mom, why are you eating and crying? That's why I say an emotional eater. Emotional eater could be a person that's like crying, eating, or it's just um, loving to eat. You know what I'm saying? So when he said that to me, that's when it, I don't know, right then and there it was like, it triggered something. And I just see my weight just going up and up and up. Well, it actually started. There's a reason why. Pretty much all my life, I felt not wanted, loved, accepted. This ain't no pity bus. This is my truth. This is my story. And this is where it started. And... I wasn't living in the state where I was at from my age 18 until I want to say 33, 34. I was cool. I had little problems. And I think that was pretty much like um, after you have kids and stuff like that. But I was happy. Came where I live at. I say about two years. I moved here 1999, May of 1999, where I reside. And I say two years was cool. Fine. I started feeling like I was a little kid back at home. 
and I started shutting down again. Um, I've been to several therapists, not no psychiatrists because I'm not crazy, to talk about my problem. Because I started crying. I felt like I was a little kid like I was at home. I didn't know what was going on. I miss my kids. Me and their dad did co-parenting. He did six years. I did six years. So that was a little bit of it too, but not that much. And only reason I say not that much, a typical mother would, meet, um, would miss their child or a father too, right? But it just seemed like everything was just stacking up, stacking up, piling up, piling up. So it would be a piece of that, piece of that. But a big chunk of it was of a situation I was dealing with. In a marriage, okay? I was a foster mom. And when I was a foster mom, the baby brought me almost like completion. And my kids loved it her too. I didn't get her without, you know, talking to my kids about it, so that's that. But it seemed like from 2005, everything started going down spiral. I had the baby. I had her three years. I was supposed to get her, adopt her. And then something happened to where they wanted to put all the kids together. But then that still wasn't what the tip of the iceberg was. Took the baby to court. Left my child there. Now, mind you, my birthday's January 30th. All this stuff. January 30th, my birthday, and then my baby got taken the 31st. And same way with my mom passing away, Twenty, uh, what was it, 10 days before my birthday, we buried her after. So the 31st, 30th, 20, that that started just like messing with me mentally in a, in a emotional way. How are you going to take my baby and leave her? So at this point in time, See me crunching. Unhealthy foods. Unhealthy foods. Any and everything. You know. Got sad. Been to several, several, several doctors. And the last doctor I went to, I remember, was at this hospital called St. Luke's. He told me, there's nothing wrong with you. It's what you're dealing with. So that's making you have these issues. Oftentimes, we stay with people because of the wrong reasons, right? And one of them is the lifestyle. And money. Stability. But that's not love. Should no one, if they love you, hurt you. Okay, people have dis you know, I'm I'm just a realistic person, okay? People have their little disagreements and little little bitty little bitty disputes, you know, but nothing like put your hands on somebody. No, I ain't deal with that now. Put your hands on somebody, call them out the name, always, you know, uh sleeping in a separate room or always leaving and don't take the person make the person feel included that's what i'm talking about things like that so that's that's what makes it mental so i shut down that's why i said i've been in that i shut down um i stay separate and in the midst of that i was eating when i came to where i live at the state i live at I was small. I mean, like, I think probably 230. I'm six something. I'm a tall woman, okay? So I got up there in my pounds. I'm talking about up there, up there, okay? I dealt with that. For maybe four years of being overweight until my oldest daughter, she went to uh, Slim for Life. And me and her did it together. And I probably took off maybe 40 pounds 
We would go to the gym. She uh, supported me. She uplifted me. Vice versa. That's when you start feeling good about yourself. And something in the back of your mind, front of your mind or whatever, it's like, okay, this is making me feel good. Why don't you want to feel good all the all the time? I had made myself a promise in 2009 that 2010 was going to be a different year. I don't make promises. 2010 came. I was rushed to the hospital. Ambulance came. Had a house full of people. And everybody, some people was outside. We was having like a barbecue thing. And I feel like the best way I can explain it is like I was having a heart attack. This man, you know, sometimes you wish you can find somebody just to tell them, thank you for saving my life type of thing. When he put me in the back of that ambulance and he got off, he went straight to my son. And I did not tell him that that was my child. All those other people that was out there, he went to him. And he told me these words. You're not getting out of this ambulance. Took me to the hospital. They did an EKG. Come to find out, I had real, 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 I'm talking about bad anxiety. Okay? That's why I talk about these things. The anxiety and depression. Mm, anxiety is a little bit different, but the depression part of it made me feel this way. The man was at home. It was in evening time, late at night. They had to call him in to do this test on me. EKG test. I didn't have a heart attack. It was a real bad case of anxiety. You know what they did to treat me for that? Nitroglycerin tablet under my mouth, which they state that it can treat different things, you know. But most people know nitroglycerin is for heart attacks, right? Mm, I won't say less than 30 minutes, I'd say. They came back in there and said, we're going to do another one. And I kid you not, one tear one came out my eye I don't know why that one and the social worker came in to talk to me asked me was I safe so on and so forth and saw this individual and when the individual walked out she said I'm not supposed to say this that's your problem First time, just your problem. I didn't tell this woman nothing. I didn't even really get to talk too much. She just asked a few questions. I probably did some nodding or something. I don't know. But anywho, I was out of it. She said, do you want to go to a safe house? Mm -mm. My kids was there. <laughs> okay. So, I got out the hospital. I mean, well, I didn't get admitted, but I was there. You might as well say a whole day or whatever, run a test on me or a night. And I said to myself, you better get a hold of yourself. That was in January of 2010. February, March, April, May, four months later. I got a hold of myself. There's a whole bunch of concoction I could throw in there. I'm telling this and I'm saying this, but I'm going to tell you. You have to be strong and not always be weak when you go through something. I don't know if I share this on YouTube, but I said it on Facebook. To be successful, you have to fail. Think about it. Think about it. We think we're going to get a quick fix. We think we're going to be rich just like this. A lot of people fall on their tail 20 million times until they get up 
and hit it hard. No is not an answer. But no means no in situations, right? You always should try to find you a yes somewhere in there. Keep trying. Keep trying. I get up with motivation. I get up with a drive. My back was killing me yesterday. But I'm just telling you, I'm going to have to come back on here and make another one. Part two. You can do it. I'm always say, Jim, Jewel, you can do it. This is Motivational Monday. Sunday starts the beginning of a new week. Monday. People say Manic Monday, Madness Monday, Motivational Monday. And I'm saying, get up, get dressed, put your foot on the ground, put your best foot forward, and move. You know why? Because you are a gym. You got it. So I'm going to have to come back on here and do a part two. You'll see this face again. Get up and get to moving. The lady with the scar. I'll see you soon.